Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this lecture, uh, we will continue with the group action and then first uh, let us define some basic uh, terminologies and after that uh, we will focus on this orbit uh, stabilizer theorem. Okay, let us uh, fix some notations before uh, beginning. As before, let us take uh, G be a group and uh, X be a non-empty set. So now uh, let us say G acts on X via some uh, group home of some tau. Okay. So G acts on X let us say via tau. So what is tau? Tau is a group home of some from G to SX. Okay, so now with this data, uh, what we want to actually uh, define, there are few things that one can define uh, both related to the group as well as the set. So, let us first uh, define what is called an orbit. Okay. So, let us fix some element uh, X in capital X. Okay. So, this is the element that we are fixing. So, then what we want to do, so let us say diagrammatically, so this is our capital X and then you have chosen uh, this element uh, small x in capital X. So, what we can do now, so for given G, so you have this tau G, so which is a permutation of capital X. Okay. In particularly, we can look at the image of this small x under this tau G. Okay. So, let us uh, see what happens. So, this is tau G of x. So, in shorthand notation, we denoted it by g dot x. Okay. And now, what we can do? We can vary this g in capital G. So, we can, we can trace out all possible images of this x under the elements of capital G. So, that is called the orbit of x. Okay. So, the orbit of x, so which is uh, has many notation in the literature. Okay, either it is written O or B of X or O X. So, we will use this uh, notation O X. Okay, this is the notation we are going to use. So, this is by definition. So, you look at all possible images of this X under this action of elements of capital G. Okay, so, you look at G dot X where G in G. So, this is called orbit. So, for example, if G is finite group, then what will happen? So, there are only finitely many elements in capital G. So, if you look at the orbit of this X, so then it can be at most finitely many because you are looking at images of this X under the action of capital G, but capital G itself is finite. So, you can have only finitely many. Okay. So, note if the group is finite, then the orbit is also finite. Okay. So, now uh, here is another important uh, terminology. So, sometimes uh, we are interested in understanding okay, uh, what, uh, how big this orbit and so on, exact cardinality of the orbit. Okay. So, we will see in a minute these orbits okay, for different x's, different elements of capital X. So, that will actually form a partition of this uh, capital X okay, where that x actually runs over some particular indexing set. Okay. So, that is a very important property of this orbit. So, maybe let us actually prove this. Okay. So, here is the theorem. So, this is called orbit decomposition orbit decomposition of capital X. Okay. So, let us see uh, what we are getting. So, so, for X in X, we have this uh, orbit of X. Okay. So, if we take let us say this X, so this is X and if you fix some small x, then what we are seeing, we are actually looking at 
all possible orbit of this. and so on. So, then that will form a some subset. Okay. So, what we will prove actually these things that we are forming. So, if you take y and then g dot y and so on. So, these things z, g dot z and so on. So, these things will form a partition of capital X. So, recall what is the partition? Partition is a collection of subset of capital X, okay. they are all mutually disjoint and whose union is capital X. Okay. So, uh, we need to prove two things. Okay. So, we want to say that uh, the orbits. Okay. So, now we need to collect these orbits okay. uh, like uh, from some, so we have to choose some representatives of these orbits. So, the representatives you have to choose very carefully okay, because you want to choose representative from each and every orbit exactly one from each, each orbit. Okay. So, let us say that is chosen. Okay. So, so it is easy to write it in English then maybe I will rewrite it in mathematics. Okay. The set of orbits. that is the collection O x, x in x. Okay. For example, O x can be equal to very well be O y. Okay. So, this will form a partition of capital X. Okay. So, to prove this there are two things one need to prove. The first thing is okay, the union of the orbit is exactly x and the second thing is if O x intersection O y is non empty then that should imply O x equal to O y. So, these are the two things that actually defines a partition. So, the first one is obvious okay. why because x is always there in O x. What is O x by definition? It is all the images of x under the action of capital G. So, note that if I take E dot x that is exactly x. Okay. So, that is why x is always in the orbit of x. So, in particularly union of orbits will be capital X. So, this is obvious. So, now we will check the second part. Whenever there is some element in the intersection then O x must be equal to O y. Okay. So, let us prove the one way. So, let uh, z is in this O x intersection O y. If you prove this implies O x is subset of O y then we are done by symmetry because from similar thing we can see that if z in O y intersection O x then that would imply O y is contained in O x. Okay. Using symmetry then this would imply immediately that O x equal to O y. Okay, how do you check this? So, let us see how to check this. So, start with some element in O x. So, let us say that is g dot x. Okay. So, for some g in g those are all the elements in O x. But note that z is in O x. So, z can be written as some g 1 dot x and since z is also inside O y this can be written as some g 2 dot y. Okay. So, now what we need to check okay, let us call this element x dash. Okay. We want to say that x dash is also element of O y. Okay. So, this x dash to prove that okay, this is the claim, this is an element of O y. Okay. So, that means we need to find some h in capital G such that x dash equal to h dot y. So, this is what we need to find okay, such h we need to find. Okay. We have to find that using this information. Okay. 
So, let us see how one can do this. So, first of all note that this x is indeed related to y. Okay. So, you can take this z on x which is equal to z to y. Now, by applying g 1 inverse on both side what we get g 1 inverse dot g 1 dot x okay, that is going to be g 1 inverse dot g 2 dot y. So, now this is same as okay, this is applying tau g 1 inverse on tau g 1 x. Okay, this is exactly tau g 1 inverse applied on tau g 1 of x. But what it is? It is you know that tau g 1 inverse composition tau g 1 of x. But tau g 1 inverse is nothing but tau g 1 of inverse okay? or this is you can see that this is exactly same as tau g 1 inverse composition or the product inside the okay, let us not put the product here just uh, product in the group which we just denoted by g 1 in g 1 inverse g 1 of x. But this is nothing but what this is exactly tau identity of x, but tau identity recall it is just identity. Okay. So, tau identity is just identity on capital X. So, that proves that x is exactly equal to tau g 1 inverse composition tau g 2 of y. So, that means this is g 1 inverse dot g 2 dot y. So, this is what we are getting. Okay. So, that means in some sense x is in the orbit of y. Now, if x is itself in the orbit of y, then if you take any other conjugate of x, okay, all these elements g dot x, they are all called conjugate of x. Okay. So, the, that will be again inside this, okay. because now you see x dash is what? x dash, x dash is g dot x. So, then you can see that this is exactly g dot g 1 inverse dot g 2 dot y. So, that means x dash is nothing but g dot g 1 inverse okay, maybe rewrite this g g 1 inverse g 2 dot y which is in the orbit of y. Okay. So, that proves that orbit of x is always contained in orbit of y if the intersection is non empty. By symmetric we get again orbit of y. Okay. So, by symmetry or the similar arguments we get orbit of y is contained in orbit of x that implies orbit of x equal to orbit of y. Okay. So, this means if you take two orbits either they are disjoint or they are equal. Okay, that is what this statement says. Okay. So, now what we have done? So, we have taken this capital X and then we have used this orbits okay, to actually partition this capital X into some proper subsets of capital X. So, this is the partition of this. Okay. So, you have partitioned capital X into small small orbits. So, now if you think about it, okay, now we need this uh, parametrizing set. Okay. So, this is actually a standard notation that uh, one can uh, use. Okay. So, this X mod G okay, as before uh, that we have uh, introduced this in the quotient group okay, or quotient set. So, motivated from that okay we are defining this x mod g to be the set of all orbits of capital x with respect to the action of capital g okay so this is my collection so what is x mod g x mod g is all the orbits ox x and g so, now 
since this x mod g okay we can identify this with okay by quickly some subset capital lambda of x so how one can do this okay this is the bijective correspondence so this is just uh, bijective correspondence so what i want to do i want to pick one element from each orbit okay using this uh, axiom of choice you can always do this okay this is using axiom of choice so what you can do you can pick one element here x here z here y and then here u so that you form this capital lambda okay so what is this capital lambda capital lambda choose subset of capital x such that capital lambda intersection the orbit is singleton the cardinality of this is singleton for all x in capital x okay or you can also say something like this for all only the orbits matters ox inside your x mod g so because of this there is a natural bijective correspondence between capital lambda x mod g which is just given by you take x and then send it to the corresponding orbit okay so sometimes we identify this x mod g with capital lambda and work with that okay or sometime we work with capital lambda so it will be uh, very important to determine what is this capital lambda we will do that in many uh, many of the examples that we have seen earlier okay but this is something very important okay so in particularly when i write this orbit decomposition so i write x as so let's say disjoint union this symbol uh, means uh, disjoint union ox where x indeed comes from capital lambda so this is just the indexing set indexing set okay which is chosen such a way that this capital lambda intersection ox is the cardinal is 1 for all orbits okay so this also sometime we write it this way disjoint union ox where ox runs over x mod g okay sometimes we identify capital lambda with x mod g so we rewrite the same thing as x equal to disjoint union ox x in x mod g okay so it is understood what it means for example if you are not comfortable with this identification you can put x bar if you want okay but it's not let's not use this maybe like to emphasize what we are indeed doing let us use this okay so this is what we are going to use so this is called orbit decomposition of capital x of course with respect to the action g so now uh, now this is something uh, very interesting decomposition because using the action of the group we have divided x into smaller smaller subsets so they are just orbits okay but let us say you are interested in counting the number of elements in capital x okay let us say the cardinality of x is finite that is x is a finite set then what is this orbit decomposition says immediately then the cardinality of x is exactly summation the cardinality of the orbit where x runs over this capital lambda okay in order to actually understand what is the cardinality of x so it is enough to understand what will be the cardinality of these orbits and of course what will be the this indexing set so both informations are needed in order to actually calculate the cardinality of x so that is what actually motivates us to actually look for what will be the cardinality of this orbit x for example like i said when g is a finite group okay then the orbit is always finite okay because the number of elements here coming from only the images of elements of capital g 
okay so one since capital g is finite so there there are only finitely many images so let's see how one can actually compute the cardinality of this orbit okay when uh, orbit is finite but before that let's make this observation okay so we have a very uh, important group okay that is lying there uh, underlying in in uh, for any orbit okay what is that group again fix uh, x in capital x okay so first let's understand okay when two orbits can be equal let's say orbit of x is same as orbit of y so what is the meaning of that okay one can check this is if and only if okay so this is something i will uh, leave it to you so this is something i already proved proved off of it okay so because by symmetry other of is clear so orbits are same if and only if y is equal to some g dot x for some g in g okay so it's exactly the same proof okay because if y if ox equal to oy then y is in oy so y must be some g dot x but if y equal to g dot x then it is easy to prove that oy must be subset of yx okay and now if y equal to g dot x then it's easy to see that x is also in the orbit of y by applying g inverse on both side because y equal to g dot x if and only if g inverse dot y is exactly x so using this property one can verify that this uh, whenever y is conjugate of x then o x is also like x will be conjugate of y then o x is also subset of o y so we already introduced what is called uh, equivalence relation okay if we think about it so this definition is actually gives us what is called equivalence relation on capital x okay so this is something i will leave it to you to check okay so we are defining this relation let's re define this tilde g so this is a relation okay relation tilde g on capital x so what is this so this is you say x for x comma y in capital x we say x is related to y if and only if y is just conjugate of x y equal to g dot x for some g in g okay so this is our definition of the relation so i will leave it to you to check this is indeed tilde g is on equivalence relation okay that is not very hard to see so you need to check this is actually reflexive symmetric and uh, transitive okay so now using the group property you can verify this okay it's very similar to what we did uh, the left multiplication of the group in the group itself okay so that's why i don't want to again check it now what is important for x in so this is the first one the second one for x in capital x if you look at the equivalence class okay that is those y in capital x such that y related to this x under this relation so that is exactly the orbit of x okay so this is something uh, you can you can check directly from the definition okay both are easy to check so i will leave it to you so in particularly this also tells because equivalence classes you know that they form a partition so in particularly this actually gives you the set of orbits gives you partition of capital x so now uh, let's try to understand how one can approach uh, the orbit of x okay so this tells you that whenever y is in orbit of x then y must be equal to some g dot x okay 
So, if you are interested in counting the elements of orbit of x, so, so let us say the cardinality of g is finite, let us say some n, then definitely the orbit of x can be written as g1 dot x etcetera g n dot x, okay, where g is listed as g1 etcetera g n. But obviously what happens this will be over counting because for some g i's okay, so the images can be equal. So, for example, some g dot x can be equal to g dash dot x. Okay. So, in that case we are indeed over counting this set. Okay. So, we need to be very careful. So, let us see when that can happen. If g dot x is same as g dash dot x, so then let us see what happens. Then you can easily see that this would imply x equal to g inverse g dash dot x. By applying g inverse on the both side, you can see that x is same as g inverse g dash dot x. That means what? That means this particular element that actually fixes this x. Okay? So, so that is something very interesting. So, that motivates us to define what is called stabilizer of x or g x. Okay? We use both notation. What is this? This is those elements of capital G such that that actually fixes this x. Okay? You collect all possible elements of capital G that actually fixes this x that you call it stabilizer. So, definitely all these elements okay, of capital G, okay, let us say this is some uh, some G i 1. Okay. So, let us let me read it here. So, this, this is the over counting. So, which is G 1 x dot x etcetera G n dot x. So, now we have defined this stabilizer of x. Okay. So, which is G x. So, here also I want to put g here because stabilizer with respect to the action of g. So, this way if you write it as g i 1 etcetera g i k. So, then what happens for all this g i 1 etcetera g i k the images of x will be x only. Okay? So, that means all of them are going to give you one single element. Okay? So, in case if you want to group them. Okay, then you can from from this list if you want to read it out. Okay, at some places it will be just x, x, and so on. So that means it should be counted only once because this is obviously over counting. Okay, so then how to do the counting properly? Then we will see. Okay, for example, for x we see that what elements are giving x. Suppose if this subset of G satisfies something interesting, okay. Let us say, okay. Actually, we will we will prove in a minute it is actually a subgroup, okay. So once we know that it is a subgroup, then it's clear that we can talk about left cosets of this subgroup, okay. So in particularly, we have something interesting, okay. We will prove that this is a subgroup. Then we can look at all the left cosets. For example, if you take one particular left cosets, call it let us say G, G x. So, this is going to be what? G h where h is coming from G x. Now, take some typical element G h from this coset and apply it on x. Okay? Let G in G and h in G x. Look at this G dot x. What happens to this? This is exactly g dot h dot x, but h dot x is what? x because h is coming from the stabilizer. So, then this is exactly g dot x. So, this is exactly g dot x. Okay, for all this h, okay, once I fix g, small g, then g dot x is going to be just g dot x. Okay, that means the entire coset is mapped to only one element. Okay? So, you can see that 
if I relabel this g mod g x which which has something like let us say some g 1 g x etcetera some g d g x ok. So, then we are seeing that g 1 g x is actually gives us ok g 1 g x dot x which is exactly g 1 dot x and similarly g d g x gives us g d g x dot x which, which is exactly g d dot x ok. So, only these elements are going to survive and we still need to see whether this is again over counting or not ok. So, using this cosets we see that this uh, collection orbit of x is exactly equal to g 1 dot x etcetera g d dot x ok. So, in particularly we got somewhat smaller counting ok. So, this is obviously over counting from this we came down to only this d is going to be what this d is going to be the cardinality of g divided by cardinality of g x if g x is a subgroup ok. So, so this is exactly giving us d number of elements where d is the index of g x in g ok. So, we indeed prove that uh, ok the following thing. So, we prove that g x is indeed a subgroup of g and then the counting that I specified now is exactly uh, the uh, that exhaust O x and it is exact count of O x. So, that means the cardinality of O x is exactly equal to cardinality of g divided by cardinality of g x. Of course, here I am assuming for example, g is finite ok. Here cardinality of g is assumed to be finite ok. Ok, I will stop here uh, and then uh, I will continue uh, with the proof in the next lecture and I will also demonstrate this uh, using uh, some examples. So, what is important thing to note ok obviously, when you count the orbit we actually do the over counting somehow this over counting should be reduced to correct counting for that purpose the stabilizer helps us ok. So, that is the thing important that you have to notice ok I will stop here. We will see next class. Thank you.